Good afternoon. Welcome to this session on uh, listening skills. We are going to look at the listening skills and notes taking in the combined session, but today's session is primarily focused on the listening skills and if time permits, we will touch upon the notes taking and the activities related to notes taking will happen tomorrow uh, in the morning session. So, since this is a session on listening, uh, best way to start this session is to listen. So, I will request my uh, team members here to open the first link uh, on the YouTube uh, and you have to just listen this. So, this is an audio clip. halt and now this piece will continue and I will request you to focus on one instrument or sound of the vocalist or there are a couple of instruments being played out in this orchestra. So, you, could, you can you may please focus on the one instrument or one voice and listen this piece. So, I am playing it again. Thank you. 
So, you listen this piece uh, on two different in two different ways. One when you are trying to listen it as it was being played out and next time when I request it to focus on one part of the music, one voice of the music. Was there any difference in the experience of listening to the piece of the music first and second time? We did not hear it third time, but in the first and second time was there any difference? Why do not you talk to your partner, person sitting beside you in the learning center and spend a minute to check what was his experience or her experience of listening the same piece twice? First time when it was a general listening and the second time when you were focused on the one instrument. So, we spend a minute on this discussion and then we look at some what are the distinctions coming out of this exercise. Hello. Yes, you want to share something? Hello. Can you please repeat. Sir, when we were listening for the first time, uh, we did not emphasize much on the instruments, but when uh, is, uh, before uh, listening it to the second time, when you told us to listen carefully uh, the instruments then we could listen carefully the instruments and uh, like violin voice we all could uh, listen and second time we enjoyed uh, in a better way. Second time it was active and selective listening. Yes, so second time you are paying focused attention. When this, uh, when you are focusing on, when you are focused on one instrument, your ability to appreciate other instruments diminished or enhanced or is it enhanced it yes. got enhanced yeah so this is the first distinction this is called scattered attention or focused attention the scattered attention is when we are looking at so many things and in that process we are losing out on many of them whereas if we focus on one thing at a time we perhaps are able to become more sensitive and our perceptions are clearer about the other stimulus also. So, as you rightly said that this is a distinction between listening, just listening and active listening. We can also say that this is a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing happens naturally, hearing is just our biological capability of receiving sound waves these are also one of the forms of electromagnetic waves, whereas listening is our choice. So, there are the, these are the two distinctions, first one is scattered attentions or focused attention and second listening can be, a, listening is a matter of choice, hearing can be, is, is happening in a passive manner always. So, we have already discussed that listening is our choice. Now, uh, we will focus more on the words, this time we were focusing on the music, but now you need to look at this video, uh, it's a, it is again drawn from the YouTube and it is about a scientific work, it is called body architect. So, I will request my team to start or upload or send the link of this uh, video. I call myself a body architect. I trained in classical ballet and have a background in architecture and fashion. As a body architect, I fascinate with the human body and explore how I can transform it. I worked at Philips Electronics in the Far Future Design Research Lab, looking 20 years into the future. I explored the human skin and how technology can transform the body. I worked on concepts like an electronic tattoo, which is augmented by touch, or dresses that blushed and shivered with light. I started my own experiments. These were the low-tech approaches to the high-tech conversations I was having. These are Q-tips stuck to my roommate with wig glue. <laughs> I started a collaboration with a friend of mine, Bart Hess. He doesn't normally look like this. And we used ourselves as models. 
We transformed our apartments into our laboratories and worked in a very spontaneous and immediate way. <laughs> we were creating visual imagery provoking human evolution. Whilst I was at Philips, we discussed this idea of a maybe technology, something that wasn't either switched on or off, but in between, a maybe, that could take the form of like a gas or a liquid. And I became obsessed with this idea of blurring the perimeter of the body so you couldn't see where the skin ended and the near environment started. I set up my studio in the red light district and obsessively wrapped myself in plumbing tubing <laughs> and found a way to redefine the skin and create this dynamic textile. I was introduced to Robin, the Swedish pop star, and she was also exploring how technology coexists with raw human emotion. And she talked about how technology with these new feathers, this new face paint, this punk, the way that we identify with the world. And we made this music video. I'm fascinated with the idea of what happens when you merge biology with technology. And I remember reading about this idea of being able to reprogram biology in the future, away from disease and aging. And I thought about this concept of imagine if we could reprogram our own body odor, modify, biologically enhance it, and how would that change the way that we communicate with each other or the way that we attract sexual partners? And would we revert back to being more like animals, more primal modes of communication? I worked with a synthetic biologist and I created a swallowable perfume, which is a cosmetic pill that you eat and the fragrance comes out through the skin surface when you perspire. <laughs> it completely blows apart the way that perfume is and provides a whole new format. It's perfume coming from the inside out. It redefines the role of skin and our bodies become an atomizer. I've learned that there's no boundaries and if I look at the evolution of my work, I can see threads and connections that make sense. But when I look towards the future, the next project, it's completely unknown and wide open. I feel like I have all these ideas existing embedded inside of me, and it's these conversations and these experiences that connect these ideas and they kind of instinctively come out. As a body architect, I've created this limitless and boundless platform for me to discover whatever I want, and I feel like I've just got started. So here's to another day at the office. <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> <laughs> so, this video is over and as we do with our students, this is happening to us today, there is a surprise quiz. So, this is a quiz based on the video and let us see how many of us are able to find, recollect the correct answers of how many of these questions. So, you have uh, precisely two minutes for this. So, Lucy McRae defines her profession as which laboratory she used to work in while she was at Philips, where is her studio apartment located, name the pop star and her country with which Lucy worked for a music video, what is the method described to use the soluble perfume developed by her and last question after using the perfume which we discussed, which was discussed in the TED talk, our bodies start to act as. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, the first uh, answer is she thinks herself as a body architect. Yes. Okay, next. Uh, next question is not visible in front of me, sir. Which laboratory she used to work in while she was at Philips? So, all uh, are all the questions visible to all of you? They are part of. Yes, sir. It's visible. So please uh, write down the answers, and uh, it is test, but not in the that strict sense. You can write answer for yourself, uh, and then check with your neighbor, the person sitting beside you, your learning partner, and. Uh, just look at each other's answer. We can take about half a minute for this. So, you can spend half a minute to complete this exercise. The answer to the fifth question is uh, osmosis and the sixth question is atomizer.
okay and fourth anyone from the group not necessarily same person has to respond anyone for the fourth question fourth question first one was body architect now one is settled <laughs> second third and fourth nobody uh, the apartment was at um, california long island okay so uh, we are going to project the right answers body architect is the first answer far reach design research lab that's where she worked red light district where the experiments were conducted robin from the sweden is the pop star and eating the soluble pill which is the fifth question and body start a, start working as an atomizer the sixth question so uh, the concern or the question the bigger question is not uh, so how many of you uh, could you uh, in the room could answer uh, more than three questions or four questions how many of you could answer the four questions you can raise your hand you can hand raise physically at your center okay so uh, so this was just a quick check and uh, we can embed some of these kind of exercises uh, in our classes to make uh, students aware about how easily we stop listening without even us realizing it uh, but let me put this question in a different way had there been some announcement that there is going to be a quiz followed by the video how many of you think that you would have you would have performed better so can i have some responses so we are just uh, starting a poll so uh, all the centers can respond through the poll so most of them are saying properly. okay so uh, we have the um, response of the poll overwhelmingly means if i can if i put it in the percentage term 98% people think that they would have performed better had there been an announcement that a quiz is is going to be followed by uh, this video so this is the third distinction i would like to bring uh, to your notice that is the purpose of listening decides the quality of listening so purpose can vary within the range means the purpose can be uh, that okay i am i am sitting here so i have to spend one hour so let me survive this one hour in somehow in whatever way is possible purpose could also be that this is a great learning opportunity and let me give my best attention the highest attention or purpose can be to create great things in life winning nobel prize and uh, then the purpose with which i am sitting in the class and listening professors uh, determines a great deal about the quality of listening so listening in the classroom since since this uh, session is about the classroom and since this session is about the teaching uh, and communication skills in the classroom i think as a teacher we need to clarify why students should listen and we need to motivate our students to question themselves to settle this question why they are listening are they listening only because they have to attendance is compulsory uh, of some percentage or there is a great merit in listening or listening might open up many opportunities and possibilities because if we listen only then we can learn in our tradition and culture there are three stages of learning any subject that, that are identified the shravan manan and nididhyasan these are sanskrit words but pretty secular and uh, uh, the meaning of these words are shravan is listening it's active listening manan is thinking about it and nididhyasan is 
internalizing that knowledge, combining our own insights, how we convert this knowledge for the betterment of our life and life at large. That is the, these are the stages of learning any subject and learning starts with listening. So, uh, we need to identify the similar exercises for our students depending on uh, what course you are teaching. Uh, some of them can be based on video, some of them can be based on a structured uh, uh, text you read out or you can ask your students to some of your students to read out for the class and then ask questions. Uh, there is something called cold calling you uh, keep asking students in the classroom what did you hear in last 5 minutes, what is making sense to you, what do you hear, what do you listen in last 10 minutes. Uh, these are the ways to keep students attentive and reminding them about the importance of listening. We move to the next uh, slide. Since all of you are, uh, uh, most of you are part of the engineering education institutions, these two sites will be very, very useful to all of you, uh, all the teachers who are teaching and uh, for your students. Uh, many of us must be knowing that nature and science, uh, they are the uh, leading journals in the field of science and they also have started podcast and podcasts can be accessed through their websites. Podcast vary from 5 minutes to 10 minutes to 20 minutes and they are about some of the, uh, they are about the articles published in these uh, journals, why this, is, why this may be useful. Uh, we know that the, the generation we are dealing with, generation we are interacting in the classroom is very much socialized with audio visual media. When most of us were growing up as students uh, in uh, probably 90s, uh, we uh, had only uh, written material books as the major source of our knowledge and information. We would read newspapers or read books, uh, magazines, uh, but time has changed a lot. Uh, if uh, even if uh, even a, a, a 8 year old student want to know something about anything, they instead of asking their parents, they straight away go to the Google and that is where they find words, the audio visuals, a very attractive ways of uh, expression or teaching. So, uh, they are more receptive to the audio visual signals and uh, 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 realizing this need, uh, these journals have started this podcast. About uh, the podcast, since they are on the very focused area of a topic, uh, we need to include the podcast in the course design itself. So, when we are designing a course, when we are designing the lesson plan, we also need to identify the relevant podcast in the lesson plan and uh, that podcast, the listening to that podcast can be given as an assignment. Uh, I have seen that students have, do not have much liking for the written assignments, but if we give them uh, assignments which are about watching some video talk or listening to the podcast, they they do it little with more interest and uh, obviously, we also have to listen and then we can design some small exercises based on this podcast to check whether students have uh, listened it properly or not. So, that will emphasize the importance of listening uh, uh, to the students. Uh, in the video, you must have seen, so I am not going to explain that in detail why we suffer suboptimal listening. We suffer suboptimal listening because we act like we are listening, but we are not self centeredness because when someone is saying something, we are rehearsing what I have to say in response to that. We become selective in listening and we, we listen only that part which is of our interest, immediate interest. If we do not understand things, we just fill in 
the area of our lack of understanding with our own half baked understanding and when we create new story. Sometime we are very touchy and defensive about certain topic and the moment I listen that I become sensitive about it and uh, then I do not listen anything else, but that thing which is mentioned about which I am very touchy and the insulation some of us just do not want to listen about certain things. So, we just uh, switch off. So, we need to do another exercise here all that is uh, covered in the video that listening is important uh, method of getting feedback. This is a sign of living system active listening is a starting of a dialogue and it comes with practice. But we do not indulge in a practice because that is come uncomfortable because we always want to justify our world view and while listening others sometime we have to question our world view which is an uncomfortable situation. But what is important to be a good listener is to be a, to have appreciative mindset. Critiquing is not the only about finding faults and limitation, but critiquing is also about what can we build on whatever is being said or whatever I have read. Critiquing is a very important activity in academics, but it is not only about finding out what is what are the limitations. Critiquing is critiquing is equally about finding out the possibilities in the piece that the written piece or the piece which is uh, uh, it is audio piece. So, I would like to uh, quote one statement that no one in the world is smart enough to be 100 percent wrong. And uh, with this we can pay some attention how we can enhance the listening skills. Way of listening, way, of, way to enhance, way of enhancing listening skills one of them is silence. At least 5 minute silence every day will enhance our capability to listen better. You can practice this in your office also. For example, wherever you are sitting in your centers just pay attention to your toes. So, wherever you are just give attention to your toes. Wherever you are sitting just pay attention to your toes. This is very simple exercise you can do it any time during the day you are reminded of this just paying attention to your toes. Taking deep breath exhale through mouth three times that that this simple exercise can take us out from the autopilot mode. We are generally in a operating in the autopilot mode. And whenever we are reminded of ourselves we can do this exercise just paying attention to your toes and can I have some uh, responses when you paid attention to the toes what happened. Good evening sir. Good evening Hello. welcome. Uh, we are able to hear the sounds discussion what we have carried out with respect to Lucy Mark quiz that is one thing and uh, it is the listening which we help in improvement with respect to it if we can get some more tips it would be much more better. So. Yes, so I asked uh, I requested for a simple exercise that is paying attention yes, to your toes it, wherever yeah. you are sitting paying attention to your toes without actually looking at your toes you can just pay attention to that taking few three deep breath exhale through mouth and pay attention to your toes. Is the question clear? Yes sir. Yes. While you said what happens when we pay our attention to the toes? Yes, yes sir. Yes, yes. From the brain a wave moves inwards our body towards our toes and an internal in, in another circuit is formed which takes us off from our mundane surroundings and it enhances a little bit of concentration on the self. Exactly. So, this is a 
easiest uh, meditation you can say this is the easiest exercise to enhance our uh, listening skill. Now, we can continue and wherever you are sitting without there must there might be some noise, there might be some other sounds just focus on those sounds. Someone is walking in, uh, there is some movement, if AC is on, if you can hear the voice of uh, some vehicles passing by or some construction is going on or if you can hear the uh, voice, of, voice coming out of the computer CPU whatever just pay attention to that. You might realize that even in some of the mundane sounds, if we focus on those mundane sounds, we can find we can trace some pattern and there might be some beauty in those, there might be some rhythm. Otherwise, we will never uh, perhaps the way engine works, there is a rhythm in it and that is why some uh, the, the accomplished or very trained mechanic just by listening to the sound of the engine, they can tell about the health of the vehicle. Because there is some rhythm, there is some harmony, they are able to sense, they are able to listen. So, we need to be conscious and we can spend few minutes just to pay attention to the mundane sounds and that is one way of enhancing uh, listening skills. We can go to PPT. Then another way is of paying attention to different tracks. We in the beginning of the session, I requested you to pay attention to one sound or one track. If you look at, if you had enter a, a party, you will listen so many tracks going on, high pitch, low pitch, conversations, dance, music. We can have different tracks in a party. If we just focus on one track, we are, will be able to follow that track more, we will be able to follow the track better and that is one another method of enhancing our listening skills. Now, I will uh, request all the people sitting in the center to identify a learning partner, wherever they are sitting, person sitting besides him or her becomes a learning par partner and they, will, they should sit close by so that they can listen each other and they can see each other well. I would like to see some centers. So, the points that you have stressed on, the ways that you have told towards enhancing are uh, very much relevant because uh, in a teaching scenario uh, for being a, a listener, one has to have high level of concentration and when one is a good listener, you know, when, we main, when we can maintain silence, it is when you know uh, we can listen to the other. So probably that is the reason why these points which you have described, they are towards improving our concentration level, which is what I have understood. And the second point of listening to our toes, if we can listen to our toes, then we can forget everything else. Because listening to our toes is something which is very, uh, the, the, the sound which is normally not heard, it calls for very high level of concentration. And it is a, a trick in meditation. When we can go to that level, probably our concentration levels are very high. And uh, listening to music, when you, listening to music calls for, you know, although it is one kind of entertainment, but still uh, probably this part is what I could not I couldn't do. In what ways this can enhance? But the other two points are very much. So, uh, do you have any question? Uh, yes sir, about the last point, how listening to music uh, can actually enhance listening skills is one thing. Uh, 
in the classroom uh, I have been using it only to start the conversation, because listening to music is the easiest thing. You have your choice and then you can listen that. So, that uh, if it if the listening if you are listening to that music which is of my liking, then it is not extending my boundary, that is not uh, challenging enough for me to enhance my listening skills. So, if at all music is used for listening skills, we should uh, to enhance the listening skills, we should use that music which is not familiar to us. So, for example, uh, Tibetan music is not very familiar to the Indian uh, audience. So, if we play that, for example, Maori music is also not very familiar to Indian audience. There has to be some resistance, uh, this, there has to be a lack of familiarity. If there is a lack of familiarity, then only we come to know about the resistance in listening. So, you can uh, make the student realize that if I am resistant to even unfamiliar music, which is least offensive, how resistant I would be of listening to contrary thoughts and contrary ideas. So, these are the safe mechanism for our students to make us make make them aware how our resistance to listening is so deep rooted and that has to be addressed gradually. So, initially uh, some exercises on the that is why in the class also we start with the music because that is least offensive, that is least resistant and then going to more like podcast or TED talk and then comes the discussion part. So, our listening skills are tested very strongly in the discussions. So, uh, if we straight away start with the discussion and discussing on the contrary point of view, then uh, perhaps the student would not be ready to handle their own resistance and they will start reacting in an emotional manner. But if we prepare them, guide them gently and uh, increase the uh, intensity of the exercises of the active listening gradually, then perhaps they will be uh, ready to look at the uh, to work on the difficult exercises of listening like indulging in debate, indulging in a, uh, in, a in difficult questions uh, about which different people might have very strong opinion, a strong opposing opinion. So, that is how uh, uh, in, in, in our understanding uh, is the way moving from easy to difficult, uh, general to specific kind of the, the, this is the principle we can also follow in enhancing the listening skills. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, my doubts have been clarified. Thanks. Uh, now, we can spend another uh, few minutes uh, on interactions and exercise. So, you must be, uh, I, I suppose most of the uh, centers, uh, the participant would be sitting with their partners. and. Uh, give your name to the partners, one partner can be called A and another, per, another partner can be called B. So, person with the longer hair can be partner A and shorter hair can be B or dark shirt can be A or uh, light cloth, light colored cloth can be B, whatever way you want to give the name yourself A and B, quickly give the name A and B. We can go to some centers. Yes, so could you give yourself title A and B? Uh, no, no. no, sir. Yes, good afternoon, welcome. Uh, I am A and my partner is B. Okay. Okay, and so. What do you think? What we are supposed to do. Good. So, I, I am glad to see that instruction is clear and now you have identified, you are, you are sitting with your partner. Now, uh, you need to talk about 
what is in your mind, what is bothering you at the moment. So, partner A will first tell this to partner B for one and a half minutes and then partner B will tell this to partner A same question one and a half minute. The question is what is bothering you now? I am uh, feeling like uh, very lucky. So, uh, because, uh, you need to talk I to your partner. Regarding my partner. Yes. So, all the centers, uh, please start conversing with your partner. You can keep aside the mic and talk to your partner. The simple question is what is bothering me now? At the moment, what is my concern? what is bothering me now everyone all the all the participants have to do it it's not that only two person only one person will be a and one will be b in sing one center all the participants in all the centers have to uh, work and converse in pairs on the same question what is what i am concerned now what is bothering me now I will spend three minutes on this exercise. Is the instruction clear? Uh, uh, we have to discuss with each, other, each other and then we have to let you know that uh, what we have discussed or what we are feeling with our partner that uh, I am supposed to tell you. Uh, you need to talk about at the moment what is bothering you now. What is at the moment is your feeling. It need, it need not to be about the scores, it need not to be about the uh, the academics is not to be about the exam or whatever. It can be about that also, but what is at the moment is that uh, topmost thing, topmost concern in your mind. So, my top most, uh, so, so now you need not to tell me, you can tell your partner and all the partners, all the participants need to discuss this. Okay, so, now uh, you are a and now part a partner B will tell you and I do not see other participants are indulging in this conversation. So, it is not only about you sir, it is all the participant yeah. in, in the center have to sit in pairs and take this question. Sir, everyone has uh, made a pair and they are uh, like uh, have discussed with each other. Okay. So, now we can move to the another center. At present I would like to have ice cream. That is my thought and my partner's thought is he want to have biryani. Okay. So, you are thinking about food. <laughs> that is your biggest food concern is. at the moment. That is fine. That is okay. Hello. Yes. Welcome. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. We have changed the partners and probably, uh, you know, my participants will be asking a few questions to you, sir. Okay. Hello. Yes, madam. Maybe. Maybe because uh, we are from co-education, I do not feel much change when I change the partner from a male to female or a female to male. So, uh, not much of difference uh, I could find. Yeah, so uh, the idea was not to uh, see the difference in changing the partner, idea was just to articulate what you are feeling, what is your concern at the moment, what you are thinking yeah, about at the moment. So, just yeah, having I'm comfortable with Ramesh Kumar and we were talking, uh, I do not think we had any uh, inhibition uh, the talking with each other. Yeah, yeah, that's, we were quite comfortable. That is good. Uh, good evening, sir. Good evening. Uh, initially, welcome. I was a bit hesitant because uh, it is not used to uh, anything, but uh, I feel comfortable now. Yeah, so actually uh, we are uh, we are more uh, habitual of uh, conversing about the professional things. So, we do not talk instantly in the first person account or what is exactly I am I am thinking, what is my worry, what is my concern at the moment. So, uh, that is good that you have uh, I think most of you have uh, some conversation and now I will uh, uh, move to the next part and uh, assess yourself and your partner on uh, these three parameters which I am going to uh, project in front of you now. 
So, now uh, you can uh, assess yourself on these three continuum. All of you know what is continuum. Uh, so, listening these are these continuum projected front of you are listening continuum or listening position active to passive, reductive to responsive, critical to empathic. Active means person is actively listening, it is different than hearing but person looks genuinely interested to listen. Reductive means when we listen and want to reduce to something which I am familiar to. Instead of receiving the new data, when I want to reduce whatever I listen to whatever is my within my knowledge and within my experience that is reductive uh, position and responsive position is appreciating others position and uh, then giving the response. In a similar way a, a critical listening position is when I am uh, evaluating the response whether it is right or wrong, it is justifiable or not justifiable, it is uh, uh, genuine or not genuine. So, when I am I'm, I'm critical about this that is called critical position and when the uh, when I am empathic actually I am trying to understand others point of view, I am trying to experience what other person is experiencing. So, uh, within these two continuum you can give yourself and your partner some number between 1 to 10 active is 1, passive is 10 and then in between there would be numbers like 2, 3, 4, 5 up till 9. So, between active to passive there can be 1 to 10, there has to be 1. Similarly, between reductive and responsive and critical and empathic, you can uh, think about a scale 1 to 10, 1 means uh, uh, right left side and 10 means right side and other numbers representing something in between. So, give a number to yourself and to your partner. Is the instruction clear? I would like to ask to some of the centers. Good evening sir. Good evening, welcome. You uh, can yes, sir, your instruction was clear. Uh, yes sir and um, now regarding the uh, listening question, I would rate my partner uh, like 2 sir. I mean, he was quite active uh, both when I was speaking and while listening to the conversation you were giving. And uh, the second one, I will uh, give him a 5. And uh, for the third one, I would rate him a 3, sir. Okay. So, uh, he was more towards critical in the 3 and then um, empathic is 10. So, that is fine. So, uh, I hope that you understand this point that we can take different positions while listening. And uh, so, my request was give yourself the marking, give yourself some number and then check whether number you have given to yourself is similar to what your partner has given to you. So, first you evaluate yourself and your partner then and then check the score what your partner has given to you. Is there a difference between your score and the part has someone uh, done this like this? Uh, sir, yes sir there is a bit difference I mean uh, I would rate myself in the active passive scale I would rate uh, 3 uh, for the reductive and responsive I would give myself 4 and critical nearly 6 sir. So, it is uh, more or less relevant to the scores which my partner gave to me. Okay. Okay. So, thanks very much and now we move to the next center other Thank center. You, sir. Yes sir. Sir, me and my partner were uh, like uh, both were active and uh, we were having patience listening to each other and uh, he was responsive to what I was speaking 
and as well as I was also responsive to the points which we were connecting and uh, both were empathic, not critical. Okay. And the points which I would like to give to my partner is on the scale of 8. I have given 8 also. Okay. Uh, so, uh, these things we need to keep reminding ourselves uh, in a safe environment and less controversial issues, we can be empathic, but uh, the real challenge comes when we are discussing something on which we have different opinion and that is where the uh, listening skills come and that is where our, our capability of listening comes into play. Uh, so, idea is that, so thanks very much for sharing this and uh, it is like if we start listening, we will start enjoying the process. Uh, so, in the conversations, we need to constantly look at ourselves and remind ourselves as well as each other where we are standing in this continuum, active passive, reductive responsive, critical or empathic. And uh, you must, uh, many of you must be exercising, must be having this habit of exercising and you would be knowing that muscles are built with the constant effort, with the constant practice. Many of you must be uh, interested and would be able to play some musical instrument. Many of you must uh, have experience of some art. So, you can understand it very well that art, music, sports, health, all that is result of some conscious practice. First, we take uh, small steps, then we take a little more difficult step, then we take more difficult step. So, listening is also like this. First, we can focus on something simpler, then we need to check, okay, I was able to listen in this situation, but can I be a good listener, active, can I remain empathic and responsive? Can I refrain myself to be critical in some other more difficult situation? So, no one is going to check us, no one is going to evaluate us. It is only us who are going to evaluate ourselves and if we inculcate this habit of evaluating ourselves consciously on these three parameters, surely with passage of time, we can be more active listeners we can be more responsive, we can be more empathic. So, uh, we need to look at this, uh, we need to inculcate these things in our students, uh, we need to give these yardsticks to them, we need to ask them to take these simple exercises and then we can uh, form some more difficult exercises and ask them to evaluate themselves. Students have this tendency. Uh, to pay notice to that which will fetch them marks or placement. So, at times they stop looking at what is really valuable for their personal life and for their self development. Along with the marks and placement, we also need to emphasize that development itself can be a goal, can be a better professional itself can be a goal. And for that, we they cannot rely on external evaluation, they have to develop their internal evaluation, their internal checks and balances against which they measure themselves constantly. We have few minutes uh, before we conclude the session and uh, uh, I would like to conclude the session with a systematic practice or a steps of uh, listening skills. In the acronym, it is called rasa. Rasa is a Hindi word or Sanskrit word which means juice. So, juice of listening you can say is in receiving, appreciating, summarizing and asking.
that is a developmental spiral. It starts with receiving, if we remain appreciative, we also have to summarize. Okay, so, do you mean when you are saying this, do you mean this? When you are proposing this, do you intend to convey this? So, in the, the summary and asking the clarification questions or probing questions also become part of our conversation and that is how the conversation can, can go forward, can enhance the, the quality of the conversations, can enhance by this repeated exercise and practice of receiving appreciation, summarize and asking that can form the upward spiral of conversations, listening is just one part of the conversations. In the tomorrow's session, we will look at a method of notes taking and in the morning, we will look at the innovative method. Some of you must be familiar to that method of mind mapping. We will also try our mind map, we will also try to mind map during the session. So, my request is please bring a plain A4 size sheet. Uh, or A3 side sheets, if you can, if you can bring A3 side sheets, uh, sheet when you come for the tomorrow morning session, that will be useful. And also do not forget to bring some color pencils or crayon along with your uh, dot pen or ball pen. So, uh, here we conclude the session. If you have any question, we have 5 minutes to address those questions. Sir, I yes. have a question. Uh, the the points which you have stated for listening, uh, those points are are for reading also, or the for it varies for reading. Uh, we have not focused on reading because I think there is another uh, session on reading skills and reading uh, research articles. So these points are predominantly for uh, listening, and uh, we focus the context uh, to the classroom. But at least the last slide and second last slide is uh, equally relevant to the general listening and general conversations. Sir, so one more question. How yes. to avoid critical uh, conversations? Just by being uh, conscious of it. If, we are, if I am conscious that I am, I am becoming critical, then that is the first step of reducing my aversion or my discomfort. And another very, very important thing, whenever I am feeling uncomfortable, I need to ask myself, what is that which is making me uncomfortable? So, we have all the right to feel uncomfortable, but then we should not miss the opportunity of asking ourselves, what is in it which is making me uncomfortable? The moment uh, I ask this question, my discomfort will go down and then we can perhaps ask probing questions. We can ask clarification question instead of critical question or instead of passing judgment, we can ask the clarification questions and probing questions. But for that, we have to ask ourselves first, what is that which is making me uncomfortable? Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Sir, how to reduce or avoid the selective listening, sir? Most of the people, they listen what they want and they try to avoid the important things. So, how to avoid this selective listening? We need to be simply conscious of it. Who told you that it is, who is that who has informed us I am suffering from the selective listening? It is Most us of the only. audience. Yes, huh. so audience, so can audience straight away say that I am suffering from the selective listening? <laughs> Perhaps no. Probably they may be. We need, so here comes, uh, I am reminded of a famous statement uh, by some unknown wise person who said, feedback is the breakfast of champions. Let me repeat. Feedback is breakfast for champions. So, we need to take feedback and uh, try again and then again take feedback and try again and again take feedback 
and try again and that is a lifelong journey. Okay, thank you sir. Good evening sir. Yeah. How to avoid How diversions? How to avoid diversions uh, during uh, speaking and During? During speaking and listening. Your last speaking part. Speaking and listening. Okay, how to avoid diversion during speaking and listening. So, these are the two things. Uh, let me check uh, again. You have asked how to avoid diversion in speaking as well as listening. Am I right? Yes, yeah, sir. Okay. How to avoid? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Okay. So, first I will, uh, so there are two parts of this question. First part is how to avoid diversion in speaking and I take the example of a classroom and we all are the teachers and we all have to speak. When we know a subject, we have great urge to speak. When we know more subjects and when our exposure is wider or we think large number of areas or subjects, we have even greater urge to speak. In that process, we freak out. We, uh, because of many reasons, at times uh, to show off that I know so many things, so I take example of the diverse area which students are not able to connect. Sometime I am not able to uh, remain focused on the point of conversation. What is the question? What is the topic? And when I forget that, one of the simple methods is to have a session outline to be ready and front of you. When you are delivering a talk, even when you have a session outline, while speaking, you are reminded of something else. Which is, which is which might be interesting for you, but it, it is not related to the topic. Then we have to reduce our urge to speak out and we need to really resist our tendency, uh, our impulsion to speaking about that topic which is not relevant, but I have temptation to speak. You know, sometime people start talking uh, start teaching physics and they end up in philosophy. So, if it is consciously done, it is fine, but then some people do it habitually and some people do it very often, at times it is good, but then you have we have to cover the topic and we should not forget that the persons, the students sitting front of us are the naive young students, they may feel confused. So, we have to have empathy and we have to have certain responsibility to complete the topic and for that we need to check our tendency to freak out. Even if we know the subject, I have to curtail down my tendency and urge to speak out. So, that is how, so having a session outline, having a session plan and not, not giving up to the tendency and urge to speak out even if I know about the wider area. That is how we can avoid diversion in speaking. Then comes the uh, avoidance in listening, diversion in listening. Whenever we have, we, whenever we feel divergence in listening, one simple strategy is to ask or ask the question or summarize whatever is being said. So, if I am listening and listening and if I see that my, my mind has started wavering and it is going to the another direction, it is good idea to ask a question or summarize whatever other person has said. That will bring my attention to the ongoing conversation. I would like to give example or I would like to quote one concept of our uh, Indian culture and tradition. It is called dharana. So, uh, in the yoga, there are different steps and one of the steps is called dharana. That dharana is about focus, being focused and uh, concentrating on one point. So, as long as it is not strong, we can keep the point in the written form front of us or 
keep summarizing whatever is being discussed, so that we remain in track. And uh, empathy is very important. So, we need to ask before we switch over the topic, we need to ask the participants, we need to ask the students, have they understood it clearly and once we check whether they have understood it things clearly, then only we should move to the next topic. Another way is uh, uh, just uh, checking uh, are they are, are they following it or not. So, for example, I can ask you uh, am I able to answer, am I able to understand your question and is it relevant to what whatever you wanted to ask or this is something something else I have explained. Yeah, sir, it was very clear sir, thank you. We are running out of time, but we can take one last question. Good evening sir. Good evening. When we are in the classroom, when we, when we are in the classroom, yes. uh, the students may be as active listeners for 20 or 25 minutes. Yes. Next they move to the passive listening. In that right. case, we have to take up a variety or we have to make up a different approach. What about it, sir? Thanks for asking. This is very, very valuable question and all of us face these questions in our classes. Uh, only a super brilliant individual, I am not talking about a student, only a super brilliant person can focus on one thing more than 13 minutes. So, uh, if your students are able to focus on a topic for 20 minutes, you are really blessed and your students are great. Uh, now, coming to the uh, issue of how to handle this. So, of course, the time may vary. Uh, we need to uh, for the active listening, we have to adapt active teaching. We cannot remain a passive teacher and expect our student to be active learner. What it means? It means we need to identify the teaching methods which will keep them active. So, instead of lectures, what else can be the method? So, suppose I have a topic, now I can give a lecture on that topic, I can also identify some exercises on this topic, I can show some video on the topic, I can design a quiz around the topic, I can have a small exercise or project around the topic. We need to design our session around all these possibilities. So, uh, a simple cycle is generating the need. So, first we need to generate the need why the student should study this, how it is going to be useful for them in the profession or in the course. Once the need is established in 5, 7 minutes, we, it is good idea to give them the practical problem or practical challenge. The way we did in this session, instead of talking about listening, we just played few videos and audios. So, uh, we can think about giving some practical challenges, practical problem, ask them to work on this and when they, some, some of them will be able to crack it, some of them will not be able to crack it. We, we have to remain peaceful with this fact uh, and then we can take up that topic, we can explain and so lecture or our lecture should be somewhere in between the session. Lecture, generally it is advised the lecture, we should not begin the session with the lecture and we should not end the session with the lecture. Lecture somewhere should be sandwiched between activity and the class interaction question answers interactions. So, in this way we can remain, we can keep them active. We have to and for that we have to design our sessions. So, we have to identify the practical problem, we have to identify the theoretical problem, we have to identify the demonstrations, videos, some exercises, puzzles, uh, some interactive uh, exercises, some solo exercises to convey a topic and then only students will remain active. Am I able to address this question or how it is? And we are doing it in the classroom. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Just uh, last reminder for the tomorrow's sessions, tomorrow morning session, we are going to look at the mind map uh, and another method of notes taking. Uh, please bring A3 sites uh, 
plain paper and uh, colored crayons or colored pencils. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.